Okay, and welcome to the second tutorial. This time we're looking at the second objective, which is to find the domain of a composition of functions. So I'll flip over to our first page of notes again, and now let's uh, talk about that domain. So when we're talking about a composition of functions like f of g of x, the first thing we're talking about is g of x, and then we're talking about f of g of x. So we have two different things happening with our domain. So our domain is um, the set of x values that satisfy g of x first such that the g of x values would satisfy f of x. OK, let's see if we can make sense of this. So again, we're talking about a composite function. We're talking about f of g of x. The first thing we're going to be plugging into is g of x. So that's where our domain begins. It's the set of all x values that work in g of x. Okay, But we're not finished just with that. Once we have values that we plug in that work for g of x, those new outputs are going to become the new inputs into f of x. So once we have values that work for g of x, then the g of x values also need to work or satisfy f of x. So we're starting with g of x restricting that domain, and then anything else is fine as long as it's still OK to plug into the f of x. So that's our definition in words. And let's see if we can figure this out with a couple problems. So here's our first example to find the domain of this composite function f of g of x. So we're talking about f of g of x. And that means that our sites are first on this function g of x. So let's forget about f of x for a minute. Let's talk about g of x. Since g of x has a denominator, I know that there's going to be a chance for a domain restriction. And indeed, there is. I know that x cannot be 2. If, two were what, if, if x were 2, then 2 minus 2 is 0, and you cannot divide by 0. So I know my, my eyes are right here on g of x. I know that x cannot be 2. So in my ultimate answer, my, and my final answer here for domain, I know, and I'm going to use set notation, I know that it's going to be all x is such that x is not equal to 2. Now, there might be other numbers that need to be restricted, but I know that's where we need to start. Since we're starting with g of x, we're starting with this function, and we're saying that if x can't be 2. x can be any other number. Any other number works in g of x other than 2. OK. Now that we're finished with that, we need to understand that we're not done. Now we're going to take this g of x function and plug it into f of x. So now we do need to know what number can we not plug into f of x. And you're looking at the f of x function and you're saying, well, wait a minute, x can't be negative 3. That's correct. We cannot plug a negative 3 right here, because then we'd have a 0 in the denominator. So we need to make sure that this entire function does not equal negative 3. And that's where the work is going to be. We need to take this g of x function and make sure that it is not equal to negative 3. I need to figure out what x value would make this happen, because that x value also has to be restricted from our domain. Let's solve this equation, and then I'm going to recap this. So I'm going to put this over 1, maybe. That might help. I'm going to get rid of this denominator. I'm going to multiply by x minus 2. I'm going to multiply by x minus 2. That whoosh, cancels out that denominator, and I've got 6. I'm going to keep it as a not equal to. It could be an equation or a not e an, an equation, I guess. That doesn't really matter. So negative 3 times this would be negative 3x and then plus 6. Now I'm solving for x, of course. So I'm going to subtract 6, and I get a 0. That's OK. Some students get freaked out when they see the 0 there. That's OK. It's just another number. I'm going to divide by negative 3, divide by negative 3, 
and in this case I get 0 is not equal to x, or rather x is not equal to 0. That is the last restriction. x cannot be equal to 0 as well, and I have my domain. Let me circle this, and then let's re explain this. So, I'm looking for the composition f of g of x, or rather I'm looking for the domain of that composition. Okay, so the first thing I'm looking for is I'm looking at g of x. So I go to the g of x function and I say, wait a minute, we can't plug a 2. We cannot plug a 2 into the g of x function, so x cannot be 2. And that's it. Right from the beginning, x cannot be 2. x can be any other number, okay, except now this whole function is going to be plugged into the f of x. And we know that the one number that cannot be plugged into f of x is negative 3. We did this calculation, I'll go through that again as well, to find that 0 is that number. Now, although it's okay to plug a 0 into the g of x function, because it'll be fine, we'll have 6 divided by negative 2, which is negative 3, that's fine to have for the g of x function, except what are we going to do with that negative 3? We're going to try to plug it into here, and we can't have that. So there are two restrictions, the original restriction to the denominator of g of x, and then another number that we calculated that, though we can plug it into g of x, creates a number, negative 3, that cannot go into f of x. And how we found that number? Well, we just took that, that whole g of x function and set it equal to or not equal to the number that cannot go into f of x, which is negative 3. We solved that using our algebra, and we saw that x could not be 0. So there are two restrictions, the original restriction, 2, and the new restriction, 0, which creates a negative 3, which cannot go into f of x. So that's our composition, finding a domain. I'd like to do one more just to make sure that um, you understand this concept. So uh, I've got a of x and b of x in this case, and I'd like to find the domain of a of b of x. So again, first thing, our sights are on b of x. We're looking at this function right here, and I'm seeing right now x cannot be 0. x cannot be 0 because we cannot have a 0 in the denominator. I know that this is where I'm starting, so I'm going to come over here and write my start to write my final answer. Um, x. So, uh, the, the set of all x is such that x cannot be equal to 0. There might be something else, so let's see if we can figure that out. Okay, so once I know that I'm good to go with my b of x, every other number other than 0, now I'm going to choose to plug b of x in right there. And what I cannot plug into this function is, again, I cannot plug negative 3 into this function. So I need to know when is this function uh, this b of x, negative 1 over x, when is that going to be equal to negative 3? I need to figure out what value of x would make this happen. Now, you can set it equal to or you can set it not equal to. It doesn't really matter to me. I need to solve this equation for x. So perhaps the first thing we do is multiply by x. need to get rid of that denominator, so let's multiply by x. And I got negative 1 equals negative 3x. That's not too difficult. Let's divide by negative 3. And it looks like x is going to be equal to, this would be a positive, one-third. That's our other restriction. x cannot be equal to one-third. If x equaled one-third, if I took negative 1 and divided it by one-third, I would get negative 3. And negative 3 is the one number that cannot go in to my a of x function. So that's why one-third is the last restriction. I cannot be have an x of one-third. So again, let me, let me um, explain this too, because some people are confused by this. They see the a of x, and they see the b of x. They see that a of x, uh, x cannot be negative 3, and they see the b of x, x cannot be 0. So they just say, OK, so I can't be negative 3 and 0. And they're confused as to why 0 is the only one that is correct, and then there's some random number here, 1 third. They don't get that. It's not that x can't be negative 3 x cannot be negative 3 in this function, but this is not the function where we start. We start with this function. If I happen to plug a negative 3 into this function, I would have positive 1 third. And positive 1 third is a fine value to plug right here, because I'd have positive 1 third plus 3, which is not 0. So negative 3 has nothing to do with the domain of this composition. It's 0 that cannot go in originally, 
and then one third that it cannot go in because that would create the negative three and negative three cannot go there. I hope you're understanding this. Here is our final domain solution and we'll practice this when we get into class. Um, thanks a lot for watching this tutorial. I had a great time and I hope you did too. We'll see you soon.